This is lesson 8.5. We're going to be solving acute triangle problems using a variety of tools that we learned over the last few chapters, so chapter 7 and chapter 8. Um, we're going to take a look at uh, a brief review of the different tools that we learned how to use, so the trig ratios, the sine and cosine laws, and then we're going to work on applying all these different um, tools to solve a variety of different problems. And so what I want you to get is that uh, there might be different ways to solve these problems, but the best way is for you to plan these out, um, draw good sketches, and um, you should be able to figure something out. So again, uh, let's say for example you have two sides and an angle opposite to one of the sides. Um, so for example here we have opposite here. You can use a sine law uh, to find um, one of the other angles. So for example you might use it to find this angle here. Um, and then after that you can um, figure out that this and this and this add together is 180 so you could figure out what this angle here is after and then continue to solve your triangle. Um, sometimes you might have two angles and a side. So we have two angles here and a side. And when that happens, you're able to use a sine law to find another side. Um, so using these two angles, I can figure this out. Then I can use this and this in my sine law and this and let's say this to find that length. Or maybe this and this and this and this to find this length. Um, here, same idea. So two angles and a side, find that little, that missing angle here then use this opposite angle and opposite side to find um, maybe this angle and that opposite side or this angle and that opposite side and then you continue to solve your triangle. Um, sometimes you might have two sides and a contained angle. It's usually the easiest one to spot. Um, in that case you use your cosine law and that helps you to find um, a side like that one for example. Um, and then sometimes you'll have three sides. So when you have three sides uh, you can use the cosine law to find um, one of the angles within here and you can continue using the cosine law if you wanted to or um, use sine law after that in order to find the other angles and then do your 180 minus all your angles to find the last angle of course. So there's many different strategies that you can use. The important thing is um, recognizing um, when you should use which strategy. Um, also remember that if you have these right angle triangles you can use your so uh, Toa in order to um, to assist you. So uh, we're going to go and try this problem out here. Uh, we have a hot air balloon that's 750 meters um, above the the uh, the ground or the highway. Um, when Reed is looking west, the angle of depression to the exit, which is x85, is 75 degrees. When he's looking east. Uh, X83 is located two kilometers to the east of X85, um, and we want to know what the angle of depression is um, to X83 when Reed is looking east. So first of all, we need to remember what our directions are. So top of the page is north, right of the page is east, never eat shredded, opposite of north, and then wheat, opposite of east, west here. So let's start drawing our um, two exits. So we have two exits. Exit 85, we'll call it A. We'll call this exit 85 here. And B will be exit 83. And we know they're two kilometers away from each other. Now since I'm dealing with meters here, I want to convert this to meters as well. I could have converted this one to kilometers, um, but it doesn't really matter. Um, I just need to be consistent. So to convert kilometers to meters, you multiply by a thousand. And to go in the opposite direction, you divide by a thousand. So this distance here is 2,000 meters. And we know that the hot air balloon is 750 meters. And this is going to make a right angle with that highway. Um, and we're going to start looking down towards Highway 85. And we know the angle of depression when looking down towards Highway 85 is 75 degrees, right? Because the angle between the horizon and, and looking down and your line of sight looking down. Um, let's call this C, that's the hot air balloon. Um, and 
we want to know what is the angle of depression when you're looking down towards exit 83. So we want to know this angle here, theta. Find theta. Um, so there's a number of different ways you can approach this problem. The first thing I would do is uh, take a look at what information you have. Right now it doesn't look like much. So what I want to do is I want to fill in angle information. Because we do have some angle information. For example, we can find this angle over here. So to find that angle, let's call it angle x, we can do angle x is equal to 90 minus 75, which is 15 degrees. Because the angle of depression and this vertical line here form an angle of 90 degrees, so the leftover must, be, um, must add up to 90, so 15 degrees here. In angle A, we can use our Z pattern, would be 75 degrees. But if you didn't know that, you could simply do 180 minus 15 plus 75. And that would give you, uh, sorry, minus 90. Because we have 90 degrees there, plus 75. Nope, plus 15. Made a mistake there. So 90, 15. And that would give you 75 degrees. So we have more information given there for us. Um, let's go see what we can find. So um, there's different approaches you can take. I'm going to try one approach. I can already see another approach as I'm developing this approach here. What I'm going to do is, this is my plan. Uh, I'm going to try to find this length over here of this right angle triangle. So I'm going to call that length um, length D. And then I'm going to use length D and the 2,000 meters to find length E. Then once I have length E, I can use length E and 750 to find this angle over here. I'm going to call that angle Y. Then once I have angle Y, I can use angle Y to find my angle of depression. So again, I'm using my 750 and an angle to find D. I'm then going to use D to find E. I'm going to use E and 750 to find Y, and then Y to find uh, theta. So um, if I want to find D, I can use my one of my primary trig ratios. Um, I could probably use my TOA, tan of 75 is equal to the opposite over the adjacent, 750 over D. And so D tan 75, because it's empty to the other side, becomes multiplication is equal to 750. Divide everything by tan 75. Cross that out, cross that out, and we get D is equal to, so let's do, make sure you're in degrees, tan, um, 750 divided by tan 75 is 200. I'm going to leave two decimal places, 0.96 meters. So now I'm going to find E. I know that D plus E is equal to 2,000 meters. Therefore, E is going to be equal to 2,000 minus 200.96, which is going to give me one thousand seven hundred ninety nine point 
0 0.04 meters. So that's what E is. 1799.04 meters. If you have more space, I would write that at the bottom over here. So now I have two sides of this right angle triangle. So step through is really find E. Um, step four, find Y. So I know that um, my tan of Y, tan is TOA, so opposite, which is 1799.04, over adjacent, which is 50, uh, 750 in this case. It's adjacent to the Y. Um, so if I want to find my angle Y, I would have to do the inverse tan of 799.04 over the 750. And that should give me my angle Y. So let's do uh, second function tan, oops, second function tan, open brackets, 1799.04 divided by 750. And I get 67.37 degrees as my Y. So it's 67.37 degrees. Now, my last step is find theta, which is my angle of depression. I know that theta plus Y is equal to 90, right? That forms a 90 degree angle here. So what that means is, I'm just gonna finish the work up here, that theta is equal to 90 minus 67.37. So I'll do that in my calculator here. And I get 22.63 degrees. 22.63 degrees, um, and if I wanted to, I could round that to 23 degrees, depending on what the question was asking. So I then write it there, so that was my theta over here. That's what my angle of depression that I found. So I can say, therefore, the angle of depression when looking to 83 is approximately 23 degrees. Um, so you could have solved this using other methods. I just chose that method there. I can already see another method um, and you might have already picked up on it. You could have probably used this side here and this angle to find this side. Then once you have this side and this entire length, you could use your cosine law to find this side here. Then once you have this side and this side, you could then do your cos y is equal to your adjacent over your hypotenuse, find y, and then subtract that y from 90 to get theta. So there's different strategies you could use. Um, I chose this strategy here. You might have chosen the other one. You would have had to use a cosine law on the other strategy. If you have more, let me know. Um, but that's the general approach you would take. I had to use, um, I had to think about how to solve my problem in this case. And it all started with a nice diagram, filling in the angles, because sometimes when everything's empty, it's hard to see what to do. So fill in angles if you can, fill in sides if you can, and then you can proceed with solving the problem. So let's go and take a look at the next question. We're going to take a look at um, at least how to approach it, and then we'll finish it in the um, in the next video. So um, the captain of a boat leaves a marina and heads due west 25 kilometers, and the captain adjusts the course of his boat and heads north 30 east for 20 kilometers. How far is the boat from the marina? So in the next video, we're going to draw a sketch to explain this, and then we're going to try to solve the problem.